Hey guys, welcome back. This is Jeep Sheep TV, and today we're doing a baseline on this engine. That's right, we're doing a baseline on this engine and really what I mean by that is we're going to take some data on two parameters of the engine, uh, one being the fuel pressure and the other one being the compression. This is part of a series where I'm using a Power Commander 3 made by DinoJet in my Jeep to see if I can increase power. And what the Power Commander does is it changes the fuel injection parameters. So as a part of this series, this video is intended to show you what my fuel pressure is at, so you can compare to your own, as well as my compression. So if I'm seeing higher horsepower than you and you have a different compression than me, then maybe you can link it to that. This is really just so you can take my data and compare it to your own and see if they are similar. So there's two things I want to point out right away before we get started. One is that my hardtop is floating here, and that's because it's finally nice here in Michigan, and I am so excited to have somewhere to put my hard top and be able to run around with just this uh, beamy top on here. Because of that, I can only get the Jeep in the garage one way and it's way too much hassle to get this thing down. But we plan on running the Jeep in the garage and I can't have the door open with the way that the Jeep fits right now, which is, this, it's a whole story. So one of the precautions that we're taking is I have a hose over here that is going from the exhaust and is porting it this way. It's going out the door. I also have the side door open and the side window open. Additionally, if I smell any exhaust fumes or start feeling lightheaded, I'm shutting it down immediately and we'll air out the garage before we continue. So don't you worry, you guys. I am taking proper precautions. We don't want anyone passing out or dying today. All right, you guys, the first test that we're going to be doing is the fuel pressure test. And this is going to be fairly straightforward. When I pressurize the rail by starting the vehicle, you're going to see the pressure increase. But that's not all. The pressure in the fuel rail is regulated by a vacuum actuated regulator. And as the vacuum is decreased, that pressure will then increase, allowing more fuel into the engine. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take the vacuum line off of that regulator and we're going to watch the fuel increase to its maximum setting to get an idea of what our min and max conditions will be. This is idle and we're right at 30 PSI. And this would be that maximum fuel pressure condition which looks like it's about 38 PSI. And all we're doing here to create that maximum fuel pressure condition is we're removing this vacuum line right here. This is your pressure regulator, that's your fuel rail. And this vacuum line, when you remove it, that's when it spikes in pressure. This next test is going to test the compression in the cylinder. And I'm going to be doing this test with the engine in a just a cranking scenario, so I'm not going to be running it. And to do so, I did disconnect the injectors and I did disconnect the wire to the coil. So really all we should have is the starter turning over the motor. I will also add that the engine is relatively warm still. It did just run and it had been running for quite a while prior. So that's part of this is I want it to be a relatively warm engine as I know the compression will increase as the seals expand and so on. So, we don't want to waste a lot of time, let the engine cool off. This is cylinder one. Looks like we're sitting right at 140 PSI. This is cylinder two and we are at 150. Cylinder three is again right at 150. This is cylinder four and we're just over 150 PSI. This isn't really a part of this video, but I do wanna show you this comparison. This engine we just saw is running at a minimum of 140 PSI on cylinder one and a maximum of 
just over 150, maybe 155 on cylinder four. If you recall, I have some other videos on this channel of me removing the engine of my Jeep and replacing it with a new remanufactured engine. And the reason why I did that was because of the compression. I had wore that engine out due to really poor maintenance. And I have the compression from that engine written down right here for comparison. Really not part of this video, but something that is interesting. Cylinder one was at 70 PSI, cylinder two at 55 PSI, cylinder three, 70, and cylinder four, 65. On average, that engine had about half the compression that this engine does, and that's why I replaced it. Also, just for your reference, when I added oil, Cylinder one went from 70 to 71. Cylinder two went from 55 to 70, telling me it has something to do with the rings. Cylinder three, 70 to 65, that one went down, so don't know what's going on there. And cylinder four went from 65 to 70. Overall, that engine had roughly 200,000 miles on it, and it had been abused throughout that entire lifespan. Running out of oil would be one of the things, uh, others being overheating and just really long maintenance periods, it was time. This test is doing double duty for us on data because we also had to pull out all the spark plugs. And you may have noticed that as I went along, I had one more plug removed and the engine sounded different as it turned over because we're reducing the amount of load on the starter. But this is very interesting. So another thing that I've done, and we're gonna get to this a lot more later, is I have the PC3 running at 10% more fuel than normal. In, in all ranges. I just have a map of all 10s. And that's this spark plug here. This is cylinder one. And we saw cylinder one was a little bit different compression than the rest, but I think that's okay for this. It's about 10 pounds less than everyone else, but I don't think that's gonna throw this off too much. This one here, you can see I have a 10 written on it. That's because this plug has only been in the Jeep since the fuel has been enriched to 10%. And it hasn't been very long. So some of this data is probably because it hasn't been there very long, but this plug is just sparkly clean. I mean, would you look at that? There really isn't a lot going on here. And I'll show some more detailed photos of this so all of you magician spark plug readers can tell me what's really going on here because it's not necessarily my strong suit, but this is a very clean plug with the exception of just a little bit of black on the top here. And it doesn't come off. Now, cylinder two, on the other hand, this has been in for a few months and I was doing some previous PC3 testing long before these videos, just to get an idea of what I was dealing with. And this went in during that amount of time. And you can see that it is also very clean with a little bit of yellowing here. Looks very nice. And these are copper plugs, by the way, I had bought these for some of these testing. Now, what's very interesting, is these two plugs are iridium plugs that I put in prior to going to Moab, and that would have been a year ago. So these have been in over a year. And when I went to Moab, I had a leak before the O2 sensor in the exhaust, meaning that anything in closed loop was going to be wrong. What I find interesting is this plug here is another one that went to Moab, but I had taken this out when I put in these other spark plugs. And What's fascinating to me is just how much cleaner the plug that's been in there longer is. And some of that is I'm thinking that now that I'm running a more rich mixture, the additional gasoline is going in and starting to clean these plugs off and make them a little bit more shiny, which again, I have minimal experience in this area, but that's telling me I might be a little bit too much on the gas, either that or I just haven't gone that many miles on these plugs and it's really null data. If you don't have the ability to look at the oxygen content with a relatively expensive tool, something you can do is you can read the plugs, and there's a lot of guides and videos online surrounding reading your spark plugs. Hey guys, thanks again for tuning in. I have plenty of videos on this topic, so I highly encourage you to check them out. There is a playlist about this. If you go to my channel page, you'll see that I have playlists about all kinds of different things. I highly encourage you to browse that. Additionally, you can go to the community tab and in the community tab, 
I will be posting all sorts of different things, whether it be fundraisers we're doing or just some fun polls or additional information about engines or cars or whatever I find interesting that week. Also, if you like what we're doing here on YouTube, you might like what we're doing on Facebook and Instagram. We also have a rev kit page for the ambulance and for this Jeep, as well as the bread to loaf Buicks. You can check those out. And on top of all of that, we do have a Patreon and a subscribe star. There's some really cool things coming up, but not all of it's free. So we do appreciate any and all support you can give. Again, thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you in the next video.